So now you also have uh, the, threat, the ever looming threat of zombies coming mm -hmm. on the show. We haven't yeah. seen any, but no. So now I, I guess there's so many expectations in terms of how zombies are interpreted in different forms of media. So when you start thinking about, all right, if we're going to do zombies on our show, finally, is it was it a budgetary reason initially, or was it just like ah, we don't know, we want to do something different, but we don't know what it is yet, so let's not put them in yet. It was a, it was a budgetary reason at first, um, and and we went back and forth about possibly doing a reshoot to add in a zombie, but at the end of the day, it was the zombies were the MacGuffin. Um, you know, the zombies were. Because so many zombie shows do zombies well. And even in the second season, there will be zombies. There will be zombies. <laughs> um, but, but it's not about the zombies. Because if you want to see zombies, go watch The Walking Dead. Episode after episode, people die, and there are more zombies, and you will never, hopefully, you will never get tired of the zombies. But in my show, it, it's really more about, at the end of the day, who your dream girl is, and who you're comfortable with, you know, falling in love with. If there's if there's not many people to choose from and, and you know, being okay with that. And it's, it's not necessarily about the zombies, it's more about this looming threat of the end of the world. Now, how mad are you at Will Forte? I mean, just like, why are you copying me, Will? <laughs> what are you doing, just writing my coattails? I, I, was, a, I was laying the groundwork for this. I didn't know you were gonna bring that up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I found out about The Last Man on Earth probably about six months ago, and I was a little depressed. Uh, not to mention because it's like the second time that it's happened to me in my career here in Hollywood. Oh. Um, but then I heard that it was a show that was only going to be about him. And that it was like Survivor and Castaway. And, and I was like, oh, I am legend. I love this. This is great. And then I watched the first episode and got halfway into the second episode. And I'm like, oh my god, it's bad timing. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, my stomach hurt. And uh, I'm not able to watch it. And every... Every Sunday, one of my friends calls me and is like, "No, that they have a boyfriend now, and the boyfriend came, but he's fat." Um, and yeah, I, I I can't watch it, but I, I wish them well, and uh, I'm sure you know, a lot of people come up with the same ideas at the same time, and you know, I, I don't know. It, it hurts though. Yeah. But, you know, there were there were two volcano movies that came out at the same time, so hopefully. The success of Last Man on Earth will encourage people to want more of that same. I mean, it's a it's a it's a worldwide thing of like wanting to find love, and if the world is ending, you know, wanting to grab onto somebody. So you know, I think it still plays. No, absolutely. And I see, I guess like well, at least from the character we see on Last Man on Earth, yeah. I mean, he's somebody that has a, had a terrible life and is right. kind of embracing it at their beginning and then it gets miserable. Yeah. But you, I mean, you right there, that you've had a, a rough life, and but your, your character's embracing it. Like, All right, this is the end yeah, of yeah. right? I'm happy. Yeah. Like, the, the, this is, you know, sort of at the beginning, my whole, like, marketing thing was, it's it's the worst day of the world for everyone else, but for Andy, it's it's the greatest day of his life. Like, he's he's here with the girl that he's been obsessing over for, like, the past two years. Like, just his... You know perfection so so during the course of making season one what what, what did you learn that you feel like all right this is I want, I want to apply this to episode, season two so like these are things that we kind of worked out along the way that I know we can do better when we get to season two planning um, I'm not the best at organization and I go off on a lot of tangents I don't know if you can tell <laughs> um, and maybe that's improv me or maybe it's just me being spastic but um, when I was ready to shoot I had been like writing bad timing for a while. I had talked to Aquila, beautiful Aquila Zoll, who, who plays Eve. I had talked to her for almost a year about being in the show. And then about three weeks before we were ready to shoot, I was like, oh wait, <laughs> we haven't gotten costumes. We don't know about makeup. We don't, know, we don't, have, we don't have a location set in stone. I, I know I want to shoot in the desert. Oh my God, this is like, it's all me and my friends, but like, we're not a crew of like 150, you know, I'm the executive producer, I have to sign off on all these things. So it was my first time sort of managing all of that and so just planning all of that ahead of time is a huge, huge thing. Planning, you know, I had my, my director Brandon Rabbit and my cinematographer Frank Mobilio, they were staying at our picture house while well, we all stayed at another house. They were staying there each night, planning out shots the night before of like how they wanted to shoot it because we were doing everything like so fast. And we shot 55 pages in four days, which is, if you're not a, a filmmaker, you don't do that. <laughs> um, and, and the quality which we got was just, I mean, it blows me away every time I think about 
what it could have been. Well, especially when you find people that that believe in what you want to do. So much yeah. that they're willing to stay in the picture house, yeah. sleep overnight, work on these shots and get it going because they know they don't have a limited amount of time and they want to look as good as possible. That right. definitely helps. You know, the fact that we had all worked together on a, on a movie beforehand called Project Bigfoot, which my first AD, Ricky, had, had directed. And so a lot of the cast and crew, a lot of the crew had, had stayed in the house in Big Bear and made this um, sort of comedy film, Project Bigfoot, where we had kind of done the same thing. We had shot like 12 pages a day um, and very sort of like documentary film within a film, film. And that was in like February, and so we did this in September. So it was only like six or seven months after, so everybody was kind of like in that zone already, like we were to go. But still, it's like crunch time. I, going through the shooting project Bigfoot and seeing those kind of hours and what you wanted to accomplish in such a short amount of time, uh -huh. when it gets around to bad times, you realize, all right, I mean, it'll be tough, but we've been through this. We can, we can. This, this is accomplishable. Yeah, soldier on. Yeah. It was yeah. like that kind of like we can do this. All right, we got one more shot, and then we can go to bed, or we got one more shot, then we can all go back to the house, you know, have a drink, go to sleep. Yeah. Now, as opposed to just doing it all by yourself, I mean, you are you, you are the, the leader of a merry band of crew right there uh -huh. doing bad timing. So, as you're saying, that a soldier on moment, was there a point during the, the four days film where you're like, all right, guys, we gotta, I, I gotta step up, I gotta be the guy, I'm the leader, I gotta make sure we're all driving for us because I can see the energy's kind of ebbing a little bit. That was my buddy Brandon who directed it. Um, he was constantly taking me aside. I'd be like, oh man, we gotta go, we gotta go. And he'd be like, Andy, you're, you're an actor now. You did all the work beforehand. Let us do it. You're the actor. And then he would be like, all right, guys, come on. I know we're tired. I know you don't want to get this shot. I know we got, you know, you're tired. We got things to do. It's almost midnight. Like, let's pull on. You know, we're making a great project. He was, he took the ball on that one. Oh, Thank man. you, Brandon. <laughs> and that is why he is up for a Best Directing Award for the International Academy of Web Television. Look at that. That's why you're nominated, buddy. <laughs> Was it e was it easy or hard to let yourself just be an actor once you, once you were out there shooting? It's hard. It, it definitely is hard for those of you who who want to do it all, um, or or maybe it won't be. But um, for me, I had all of these ideas. I'm very creative oriented, and I know what I want. And so, you know, I, I was like trying to not step outside of myself, being like, ah, I want him to. S that was a good improv line. Like, let's do that again. And, uh, yeah, and definitely in season two, I'll be a little more. I'll have been through it once, and we'll be able to be better a second time. Now, you've also done uh, crowdfunding, crowdfunding mm -hmm. campaigns for this, with yeah. Indiegogo and stuff. It's got to be pretty cool to, to open up uh, a campaign like that and have people funding that. I mean, that people yeah. believe in your project that you may not have ever met. They just watch yeah. it on YouTube. Yeah. Like it so much that they want to see more of. Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely is an incredible thing. Um, we, we succeeded our first season. Our second season, you know, we didn't succeed as well. Um, and, and I think a, a part of that was just because it is, it's hard to ask for money and, or at least for me, it's, it's hard for me to ask for things. And, and so the first season I was super gung ho. I got everybody excited all at once. And then the second season it was like, Hey, we're doing this thing. And, and like the pieces didn't align. And I had, I was working on a film at the time and people were working on films. And then it was like, well, it stands on its own. We've been nominated for things, you know. I'll, I'll do it myself and, and have, you know, the guts and the glory because it is my project. So it does come with positives and negatives, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's the, the crowdsourcing and crowdfunding is, is an amazing, it's an amazing form and venue for, for raising money. So season two, uh, has, has it started filming yet? It hasn't started filming yet because we've been locking up schedules and it's hard because we're shooting in the desert. So there's heat. Um, we have a couple possibilities of funding in the works, and so the ups and downs of that, and figuring out how to modify scripts and modify characters, and uh, that all is very touch and go. Um, but uh, it will definitely be done before the end of the year, just because it's a passion project and I want it to be completed. So if, if none of that happens or works out, then we'll go back to the original plan and and see what happens. But for now, there's, you know, maybe some exciting stuff on the, on the forefront and the horizon. Very cool. Do you see it as a 15 episode uh, second season or is it episode number the, changing? The episode numbers will probably be changing. It'll probably be more like 11 or 12 episodes, but right now it's like, it's more like, uh, this was 48 minutes uh, uh, first season and 55 pages, and this is 70 pages. It'll probably be more like an hour, hour, you know, it'll be longer uh, season. Oh, 
So yeah. a, little, a little bit longer episodes each time? Uh, longer episodes, there's a few more characters that oh, show up, right. um, and there will be zombies. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, Andy Goldenberg, everybody. If you want to check out more of it, you can go to his YouTube page here, Golden Tusk. Yes, youtube.com slash Golden Tusk. Look at that. Check out more. Check out all of uh, season one there of Bad Timing. And you go to Indiegogo, can they still get, if, if we want to uh, contribute, can they still help out with season two? Yes, I, I've, I've been trying to figure that out. I know they're, they're starting to, uh, people have asked me that, and uh, I, I didn't know if it was poor form to start another Indiegogo campaign. Some people do that to like do finishing funds. Uh, if nothing else, I might do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I haven't set up a, another sort of bank account thing for that, but uh, I should. Uh, contact me on, on youtube.com slash golden tusk and we can work something out. Oh, fantastic. And Andy, one last thing before you go, like uh, any other people watching here, just aspiring uh, filmmakers, actors, things like that, what's one piece of advice that maybe you'd want to give them that either you got or you wish you had gotten before you started, when you started out? I really think you just have to be true to yourself. I, 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 and be true to yourself and be happy. And, and sort of that goes part and parcel with each other. If you're happy, people will gravitate toward you. And if you're doing what you love, then people are going to want to be a part of that. And, and don't sort of do things just because everybody else is doing them. People will always love individuality. Fantastic. Andy, thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks a lot. We'll be back in a little bit here on WatchHollywood.tv.